Talking about growing up in South Africa, he was born to a black mom and a white dad from Switzerland during the apartheid era, or as Trevor says, apartheid, apartheid, when those relationships were illegal in South Africa. Today, his story is really resonating with high school students in Newark, New Jersey. Why? Because Noah's best-selling audiobook, Born a Crime, Stories from a South African Childhood, was chosen for Newark's first citywide school listening club. This is big. It's part of Audible's Project Listen Up. The program provides free Audible memberships and tablets to all Newark high school students and their teachers. So we asked a few students the other day how Noah's story inspired them. If you talked about people from the ghetto like to get out the ghetto, but instead he wanted to transform it. And I feel like that just spoke so much to me since I want to tr transform this world to a better place. No matter what I go through, no matter what I'm facing, no matter what life brought to me, no matter what challenges or trials, I can make it. Look where Trevor is today. He came from literally being born a crime, and he's this successful person here who didn't let his hardships affect who he became in the future. Wow. Trevor Noah joins us at the table with your heart intact. Good to see you, Trevor. Good morning, really everyone. Good to Great see to see you, you all again. So we want to talk about the book and the project, because the Audible book is fantastic. But I really want to get your take on what's happened today because you've been talking about it all week. Right, right. And for the past week, what do you what do you make of what's happened? Well, I'm today? excited. I mean, you know, this. Uh, I think this development in North Korea is really huge for the world. Uh, I think people have to take this opportunity to not hate on Donald Trump and go, hey, mm -hmm. he took a step. He took a step forward towards peace. And if anything, he furthered Obama's goal. That's what Obama said he would do. He said he would talk to America's enemies, not just America's friends. And he was friends. criticized for it. Yeah, and he time. was. And yeah. I think it's really great that Donald Trump said, hey, man, that's, that's a good idea. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do that. I'm going to speak to our enemies. And he may have surprised South Korea by stopping, uh, you know, the military exercises on the border. But, you know, clearly this is part of a larger plan. And, and I guess if Obama was also going to do it, then there's some thinking behind this. So it's an exciting time. We'll see where it takes the world. Mm -hmm. The conversation's just yeah. beginning. Let's talk about your book, though, Trevor. This is a, we read the book. He was here last time yeah. to talk about the book. But when I hear you talk about it in audio, I really, you paint such a vivid picture that I really feel like you're taking me there. But you start with this. To my mother, my first fan, thank you for making me a man. Right. That gave me goosebumps yeah. when I heard that. It's, it's, it's such it's, a love letter to your mom. It genuinely is. And here's the thing. I realize every day that I'm a product of a person who was greater than myself who brought me here. And one of the uh, biggest gifts my mother gave me was an opportunity to become a man. You know, um, you, 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 you want to be a man, but you, yeah. you have to be created. You know, you, you have to be taught. You have to be nurtured. And I was really lucky in telling the story that I discovered that my mother was really the hero of my story. I always thought it was me, but I'm, I was just her punk-ass sidekick. <laughs> so I've accepted that, and, I, and I'm glad that the story resonated with people yeah. because it's, it's a story that is international regardless yeah. of, of, of where you're from. And so what was the idea behind bringing these audiobooks to these Newark City students? Well, you know what I, what I loved about this collaboration with Audible was we had met so many kids who said to me, hey, I, I love stories, but I'm not a great reader. Or there was one kid who came up to me and he said to me straight, he said, yo, as a young black man, some of my friends are going to laugh at me if they find me reading the book, but I love your story. Oh. And he was like, is there another way I can, I can get into your story? And I said, well, well listen to it then. Yeah. No one knows what you're listening to. Just get into the story. And, and what I loved is seeing how different people connect with a story when it is spoken to them. I've always been a storyteller. I come from a culture of storytellers. And so to have my book as part of the curriculum, but as an audio book, is a completely different way for, for learners to learn not just about uh, my story, uh, but also about South Africa's story, a story of belonging, a story of segregation, a story of overcoming a lot of those obstacles. What's it like hearing those students react to your book that way? I'm always humbled. I'm genuinely always humbled because I never thought that my story would connect with as many people as it did. You, you didn't? Know? You I did. genuinely didn't, because my, my, but, your story is always your story. You go like, yeah. I, I live in my world. I think to myself, I'm struggling with my issues. Yeah. And then you realize, we all deal with issues yes. of belonging. We all deal with issues of self-doubt. We all deal with obstacles in our lives. And they may be different, depending on where you're from. But there's always something that prevents you from getting to where you want to go. And I think overcoming that is a, is a universal story that we can all uh, relate to. And the relationship 
with somebody you love in your family is another that is universal. And at the heart of it too, Trevor, I think everybody wants to belong and everybody wants to be loved. And when you listen to the book, it says also performed by Trevor. Right. Because you really do act it out in some ways. You imitate your mom, right. you imitate Madiba, Nelson Mandela, <laughs> you imitate the people that come into your life. And I wonder what that experience was like for you. Did it change how you even thought about your life and your story? It, it did because it forced me to visualize everything. Yeah. So when you're writing a book, you're in the words. Mm -hmm. You see the words and you, and you think through it in a different way. When you're, when you're performing the audiobook, I think the reason this became the biggest selling audiobook on Audible was yeah. because I, I poured my heart and soul into it. You know, I didn't go into the studio and go, let's bang this out. Yeah. I spent hours and hours going back over weeks. So let, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's perform it. Let's live it. And I, I, I remembered each person in such a vivid way because I had to embody them for yeah. the story, which I love doing anyway. Yeah. You know, so, so in my head, I would think, what was Nelson Mandela doing? What was he saying? You know, and he was making these speeches. What was my mother doing? What was she saying? And it's eight hours, too, we should right. say. It's right. eight hours. But you know, you, you, it, it's turned into a comedy routine. But when you think about being born a crime, how at times your mom would literally have to drop your hand mm -hmm. and not claim you, that had to be very painful for you to sort of work through all of that, especially when you get older and you know what that really means. You know what's funny is? It wasn't painful working through it. Uh -huh. It was, I think, uh, it, it galvanized the feeling I had for my mother knowing that she had to work through that. Uh -huh. Because as a child, you only know your reality. Yes. I was with my parents. Sure. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that my mom was letting go of my hand right. for a reason. I was just like, yeah, she's just tired of holding my hand. That yeah. happens. It's it, life. I get it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, then, uh, and then you get to this place where you go, wow, that's what my parents shielded me from. And it's no easy thing reading eight straight hours, by the <laughs> right. way. But you're going to see your mother on, uh, this is now going to be made a film, your book. Right, What's right, right. that going to be like, having her turned into a, a, a character? In a well, I'm, I'm really lucky because it, it took me a while to think of who would play the role. And Lupita Nyong'o was gracious enough to say, hey, I'm reading your book right now. She was on the film set of Black Panther, and yeah. she, she called me and she said, I, I hope you know that I'm playing your mom. And I was like, but of course. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yes. There's an African woman who's beautiful, yes. who believes in herself, who represents so much of not just the country, but the culture. But also she's, she, she's, a, she's a box breaker. You know, when you look at Lupita, yes. you go, she's not what you think she is. She, she thinks grew up in a different box. world. Yeah. Who's and playing you? in different worlds. I don't know. Who do you want to play I don't you? know. I would love to play me, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a few decades too old. <laughs> So, so I'm gonna have to find like a little <laughs> Trevor Noah looking like. <laughs> oh, they all come there, there's gonna Yeah, be that's lots what I need. Of, yes. That's what I need. Trevor, congratulations! Uh, yes. Thank you so much well, for having me. Great. Thank you. You're doing great on the show. We use a lot of your stuff too. Yeah, I appreciate that. We use a lot of your stuff. It's so, yeah. Yeah. We appreciate that. Yeah.